taking on the task of getting the NGPA fixed. And we're already working on it every day at NASA and the team. But we currently lack some of the tools needed to get the job done effectively and perhaps most importantly, expeditiously. This legislation would give us that authority, authority that we need to accompany the responsibility that we have agreed to shoulder in order to fix the team. Once and for all. Since I know you have many questions, what I'd like to do is briefly address three questions that I know have been raised by the PAC report and legislation, and then we'll open it up to questions to, to all of us who have testified. So the first question is, will this legislation undermine progress for the creation of one mascot? To that, my answer is emphatically no. I want to assure the members of the committee that this administration is just as committed as you are to the creation of one mascot as an effective overseer for the Commonwealth's entire transportation network of roads and bridges, regional transit authorities and registry offices, buses and trains. In the short term, I firmly believe that the most effective mechanism for doing so is to temporarily create two different governing bodies. One, an expanded board for mascot, the other, a fiscal management and control board for the team. This will allow the mascot board to focus on the very real challenges facing the Commonwealth's transportation agency, challenges that involve not only operating and maintaining roads and bridges, but also providing shared enterprise services such as procurement and contract management that benefit the highway, registry, aeronautics, and rail and transit divisions. And with the control board reporting directly to the secretary, I and my staff will be able to ensure the continued and even deeper integration of all transportation functions <coughs> into one mascot. The second question that has been raised is, why do we need a fiscal management and control board when the governor has just named a group of expert members to the existing board? The MBTA needs to be transformed, not just reformed, in order to address the authority's lingering and pervasive fiscal and management failures. This change agent, the change agent that can achieve this transformation is the proposed control board for the same reasons that Chris Gabrielli and Jay Ash laid out worked in Springfield and Tulsa. To summarize what has already been said, there are at least five critical reasons that an expanded mass board cannot achieve what a fiscal management and control board can. The first is focus. The control board would focus exclusively on the T at the same time and now enabling the mass board board to focus exclusively on the remainder of the system. Second is urgency. The T's acute and chronic failures need to be addressed right now, and solutions need to be put in place quickly, not years from now, in normal course of ongoing reform and management efforts. The third is discipline. The control board can and will establish a firewall between the operating and capital budgets, ensuring that needed capital dollars are not depleted by out of control operating expenses. The fourth is authority. The control board will have additional authority in critical areas that is essential if they are to succeed where successive variants of the MPTA have failed. And finally, performance management, as the governor mentioned. The control board will act differently than past boards, setting performance metrics and ensuring they are met. Indeed, the control board will know when its work is done because its targets have been met. Third and final question I'd like to briefly address is why is extra authority needed to fix the team, particularly with respect to flexibility to contract out? As you know, current state law prevents the MBTA from contracting out, except under extremely limited circumstances. The statute, for example, compares the cost of the contracted service to, quote, the most cost-efficient method of providing those services. But of course, the reason we are here this afternoon is that the MBTA, as described by the special panel, in the report is far from using the most efficient method of providing services. As the governor stated, the intention of the panel's recommendation and the legislation is not to privatize the operation of the entire MBTA bus and rapid transit system. But the team needs more flexibility to contract out services in order to get back on track. And of course, for the first three to five years, such contracting out would be conducted under the supervision of the Fiscal Management and Control Board providing the type of oversight that supporters of the existing law have argued is necessary. I just want to cite two examples of the ways the team could use additional flexibility in contracting out and then we're happy to answer any other questions. One is late night service. Currently late night service is provided by MBTA employees. During the regular working week, the team subsidizes a single bus trip about $2.50. Late night on Friday and Saturday, that subsidy costs soars to $20, largely because the team only owns and operates 
buses, large buses. We don't have small vehicles, yet we are only carrying 6, 8, 10, 12 passengers during much of the late night period. I would love to contract that service out. Uh, it's not clear I can do it under existing law. Here's another example. Probably the biggest complaint that we've gotten since the trains have started running again is fare evasion on commuter rest. Right now, the conductors are responsible both for safety, announcements, uh, opening and closing doors, and collecting fares. And the idea has been raised in the agency of hiring fare agents whose sole responsibility would be to collect fares. Having fare agents would allow conductors to do their jobs better and allow us to collect more money. But previous decisions by the state auditor under the Chico law bar consideration of increased revenues as a factor in determining the cost effectiveness of new uh, hiring under a contracting out service. Not only that, it's not a position that currently exists, so it's hard to know how we'll be able to do it under a different law, but I think everyone would be happy if we could put more people on trains to collect fares. And there are other examples as well. We have been asked, in some cases, beg to fix the team, and we will. But that task will be easier, and the time frame far shorter, if we can work in partnership with you as a legislature to craft legislation, establishing a fiscal management and control board, and providing that board with the authority that it needs to fix the team. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, I think the chair